turkeys have become the centerpiece of the traditional US Thanksgiving dinner, as well as being a popular choice for Christmas meals. Their sheer size means that they'll satisfy the appetites of an extended family, but they do require careful preparation and cooking. Fortunately, Yudhika has some artful ideas about how to prepare a tasty turkey and a peppermint ice cream cake, which will earn the appreciation of your guests. I host my annual celebratory meal during the festive season. It's the biggest food day of my year and because it's such a busy time, I start out by getting the invites out really early. It's become a tradition and something my family and friends look forward to. With so much hype, choosing a menu can be a daunting task. I quite enjoy the challenge and I aim to end the year on a high note. The turkey always takes centre stage and this year I'm doing a tamarind glazed turkey to go with that a duck and stuffing, which is duck and chicken stuffing. To go with that, achari potatoes, a cauliflower bake, and for dessert, an ice cream cake. I've got two 25 centimeter hot milk sponge cakes here, and I'm using peppermint ice cream today. You could use vanilla or chocolate if you like. And what you really do need for this cake is a loose bottom cake tin, so it's quite easy to lift the cake out of the tin. For this, I've got the first layer of cake going in here, and I'm going to get the peppermint ice cream out the fridge. I've also used a 25 centimetre loose bottom tin here as well. I've softened the ice cream and then pressed it down into this and it's been lined with some plastic wrap. And now we're just going to lift this up, up and out. Here it goes, there we have it. Loosen the plastic wrap from around the sides and now we're going to turn this over. Press that down, lift up the loose bottom and peel that off. Now take the next layer of cake. I'm using a hot milk sponge for this, but you could use your favorite sponge. Just make sure it's not too light, otherwise it won't be able to support the ice cream layer. I'm just going to lift up the plastic wrap and secure the cake in place. There will be a gap between the layers, but don't worry about that too much. The decorations on this cake make it irresistible. Once it's set, I'm going to show you just how to do that. And now this goes back into the freezer until the ice cream firms up again. I try not to think about the first turkey I ever roasted. It was a complete disaster and I still feel quite embarrassed. It's all about flavour when you're making a turkey. I've had the turkey sitting in some homemade brine and in that brine we've got chicken stock, we've got some black peppercorns, bay leaves, some cinnamon. I couldn't resist adding some dry red chilli to it as well. Garlic, cloves and black pepper. We've also got some onions in here. To make the brine, all you need to do is to simmer these ingredients together until it comes up to the boil. Let the brine cool down and place the turkey in the brine and refrigerate it. Now we've got another set of ingredients here, which is the spicing for the turkey. I've got some melted butter. To this, I'm adding red chili powder. We've got black pepper. I've roasted some coriander seeds. That goes in. Cumin seeds as well, roasted and pounded. Cardamom pods, about four to five. Some orange juice and a good squeeze of lemon. Tablespoon and swirl those ingredients together. Now grab the turkey, lift up, drain off the excess moisture and place that onto the baking tray. Now most turkeys come with this little indicator here and once the turkey's cooked, the little red bit pops up so you know it's ready. It's all about layering flavors onto this turkey. Salt to season, pour over the buttery liquid to roast this turkey. Just lightly rub this, make sure that we cover it lightly. For the tamarind honey glaze, tamarind going into a jug. This is tamarind that's been soaked in a bit of boiled water. Next, the honey, it's golden liquid. Garlic going in, stir these ingredients together. It's glossy and you know it's going to be delicious. The third part of our turkey recipe is done. The glaze is now ready. For the roasting, I've preheated the oven to 220 degrees Celsius. I'm going to roast this off for about 10 minutes. Reduce the heat to 180 degrees Celsius and roast the turkey for two hours. I'm going to baste that in between. Lastly, in the last 30 minutes, I'm going to actually apply the glaze at 10 minute intervals and roast in between. For the stuffing, we've got duck sausages going into the mixing bowl, chopped chicken livers into the mixing bowl, to this chicken sausages, I've removed them from the casing as well, chopped onion, chopped coriander, spring onion, fresh thyme, 
and garlic. You could add some chopped green chilli to this if you like. Season with some salt. Remember, the sausages can be quite salty, so take care not to over-season. And a touch of black pepper going in. Give that another mix. Use the back of a wooden spoon and we're almost pressing those ingredients together to combine them. You could stuff the turkey, but I prefer cooking the stuffing separately so the turkey doesn't dry out. I found some beautiful orange pumpkins and I'm going to bake the stuffing in this pumpkin. Scoop that into the halved pumpkin and press that down. We want to slightly heat this over the pumpkin like that. This needs to bake off in a hot oven, 180 degrees Celsius, for an hour to about an hour 15. The skin on the turkey is starting to turn golden brown. And once the oven door opens, you get these exotic aromas of cumin and coriander coming through. Now to glaze this turkey, I'm going to spoon some of the tamarind and honey over the skin. The tamarind is quite tangy and sour. We use the honey to balance that. I'm using a brush, but not brushing too hard. We don't want to tear the skin. This goes back into the oven for 10 minutes, and I'm going to glaze again. I just love potatoes, and this is one of my favorite potato recipes. It's gonna go really well with that turkey. For this, some sunflower oil going into a heated pan. Some mustard seeds going into the hot oil. Now I've used non-stick spray to coat the pan just to prevent the potatoes from sticking. To this, some curry leaves. Add two green chilies, some garlic, and give that a stir. The pieces of garlic are starting to turn light golden in color. Pop in the potatoes. I've part cooked these by steaming them and I've sliced through them, but I've left the skins on. Potatoes going skin side down into the pan. Season this with some salt. Move this around very, very gently. I've lowered the heat, make a well in the center, add the pickle masala. I've used the masala from a pickle bottle. It was a mango pickle. And you always have this lovely masala left in the bottle and not quite sure what to do with it. So I add it to the potatoes. To this, pour over the cream. That's all you need to do. I'm going to leave these potatoes to simmer over a low heat and allow them to soak up that luscious cream sauce. In the meantime, I'm going to finish up on the cake. What would the festivities be without a decadent cake? Remember, we've got that mint ice cream layer sandwich between two layers of Spanish cake. We've also coated that with a layer of buttercream as well. If you're wondering what these are, they're super large cake pops. I've made them by crumbling some cake and mixing that together with buttercream. Once I've molded the mixture into little balls, I refrigerate that until it's firmly set and coated with chocolate. So to start out with, I'm going to grab the piping bag and just pipe a bit of the chocolate chocolate buttercream on top and set down one of those large cake pops. To this, pipe some buttercream into the cone and just secure that over that ice cream scoop. It looks really good. I've added a little pink to this as well, just to give it some color. And you can also just squeeze that buttercream onto the cone like that. And the next cone going on top, just like that. I'm going to pop a few little bubbles here as well. Another little cake pop going over here. And I think I'll do another one here, like that. And I'm going to place a few blobs of this chocolate over the cake. You don't have to coat the entire cake. Just have a bit running off the sides. To this, add some sprinkles. To finish up, I'm going to stick that into the cake. Lastly, some mint flavored chocolate going on top. This looks absolutely amazing and it's perfect for the festivities. Let's get ready to serve. This is gonna make a fine and fabulous feast. We've got the tamarind glazed turkey to go with that, the duck and stuffing in the pumpkin, achari potatoes and a cauliflower bake. We've also got this delicious ice cream cake. I've spent a lot of time planning the menu, inviting the guests and making sure everything is perfect. But the most important thing is getting together to share love and gratitude.